So now we're inside the cab, and when you look at pictures on the website, you probably wonder which option does this machine has. This side panel is fairly standard. I don't think there's much variation here, except maybe the lights. So this is a switch for the lights. And if the switch is present when on, on the picture, then the option is there, you know, because you can see when I turn off, this is black. So if you have only pictures with without the key being on, it's hard to tell. But you need to you need to look at pictures where the key is on, and then you can see which options are, are present. Here we go. So that's standard. Um, and we will detail the, the, the panels later. So that's one thing. This panel here has some um, um, optional things. So the radio is optional. And then here you can see that I have all those existing, but I do not have those two options installed. One of them is the emergency with a side light, like blinkers left and right, probably, and those are emergency lights. So this is part of a road package that I don't have, but there is VAC, there's a radio, and here we have what's called a boom suspension system, and this is a reversing fan for the cooling pack, and this is the high flow. So all of those three are options. This is for setting the patterns. I don't understand why anybody would use the H pattern, but again, it's my first machine, I don't know anything. So the ISO pattern seems to be the most uh, logical to me. When we look at the joysticks, this is what's called a seven way or seven joystick. Joystick. One, two, three, four, five, and then in the back, you got six and seven buttons there. Same thing on the right. One, two, three, four, five, and in the back, we have those two controls here. Another option is to have what's called a three-way joystick, which have less buttons, basically. And I think in the user manual, there's a picture of it. Let me show you. So if we look at the left joystick, mine is a seven joystick. But if you had a free function, it would look like this. So it looks fairly different. So you can see that on the picture. Now the function are pretty much the same. They're just rearranged differently. Over here, we got the horn turn signal, which doesn't exist in my situation, is an option, and the creep setting, which is also an option that is not present on my machine. And over here, we have the horn, which is on every machine, but those are different as a result. Uh, now, the speed setting is at the back, and it's a lower button at the back, that one here, and the top one is the hold for the hydraulic. So this is a speed setting, for the tracks and this is a hold for the hydraulic and this is the hydraulic control this is not used this is the horn those are not used so this is what what we represent here with the seven function lever here we go so that's what i have on my machine the seven function with the horn there's no turn signal in my situation there's a proportional control for the Auxiliary, so this is not yours, this is auxiliary. Uh, I don't have the creep option, and I have the hold option in the back. And then the speed is the lower one in the back. So that's what I have on the left joystick. Now, let's move to the right joystick. So if you have a free control lever on the right, then some of the function will be placed there. You know, the float and then the auxiliary flow. I don't have a free function, I have the seven function lever here. So in this lever, it's mostly um, unused, actually. There's only the float button here. Everything else is optional stuff, which probably go to the 14 pin connector right here. There's also another connector right here, an electrical connector down there, uh, which might replicate some of those functions or not. I'm not sure what this one does. It's not documented. But I will look at it and, and publish another video about it. So this is a seven-way connector which controls the attachment. In my situation with the ISO, ISO pattern, this controls the attachment, whereas this controls the tracks and, and, and of course, those strips. So that's what we have here, seven function. Now let's have a look at the lookout. So when something illuminates, it means that it's locked. So it's kind of something to remember. It's a lockout function. So you have to press a button to unlock. The first two things are on the seat. We saw them. You lower the things. Now, this one here locks the tracks. Only the tracks. Nothing else. 
And so if you want to stay stationary, you can keep the brakes, the, the track lock, and then move the attachment. Or you could do the opposite. You could lock the attachment, not the tracks, whatever. That one here is locking the attachments. So the main hydraulics, um, meaning the two cylinders for the the arm and the boom. So that's, that's all it does. It locks with two cylinders, just like this only locks the movement of the tracks. This one here locks the hydraulic attachments. Um, and so those are two separate features, okay? Now, once you unlock the hydraulic uh, attachment, in parallel, you can also set the, the speed. So this is high flow or regular flow. So if you press this, then you get into high flow. There we go. Uh, and then when you control your attachments, as we saw before, this is how you control your attachment direction and speed. So you can set how much flow is going there. And in the back, the first button, the one at the top, so the bottom one is the speed. The one at the top is a hold or memory. So you can set a particular speed and then you press the button and it's going to hold it. It's going to continue to flow at that speed. Um, then you can also use that, that, that button as a toggle on and off and it keeps the memory of the previous flow that way you can turn on it's probably useful for example for an auger where you want to set a particular uh, speed and torque on the auger particular flow um, and um, uh, then you can turn on and off the auger always using the same speed okay so that's very practical so those are the three lockouts that we have on this machine